great. This, I'm, I'm so excited about this lens. This is, uh, um, we've got, I don't know how many, two, four, five. Uh, we've got an amazing panel now that uh, where we're going to really see some uh, sort of uh, ideas in action that I'm really, really excited about. And um, we're going to start with Catherine Ford. And I'm actually, I'm reading through these bios, and I know that normally at conferences, while someone is telling you about a person that you need to listen to in the bio, you normally sort of look at your phone, you fall asleep, you have a little nap. You've got to listen, because this is amazing. I've just, uh, Catherine is co-founder and director of GK Partners, a bespoke consultancy that specializes in creating, advising, and training socially responsible business models. Her academic background is the application of psychology in business and the development of business models, products, and services that deliver social benefit. I won't go through all your past role, but I'm just saying that Catherine uses her skills and experience to create well-being business plans for arts and organizations and has worked in the museum sector for some 12 years, creating well-being-based business plan products, services, and <laughs> partnership for the museum sector. She's currently working at the Cinema Museum. The title of her presentation is Gentleman's Club, Cake Club, <coughs> that we all want to know what this is about. Catherine, thank you. I had some cake. Sorry, I missed that. The cake's the most important. Yeah, I thought that. It's great um, to be here talking to you all. Um, the museum sector is very keen to um, share its work, and it is very keen to share it with academics because you can help give us a lot of rigor to the work that we do. The Cinema Museum is particularly keen to be involved in all things um, around the concept of memory. Um, we have a well-being business plan which you referred to, and a big part of that is understanding the social benefit that <coughs> protection can give. And we get a good sense of what we think works, but we don't know why it works at an academic level. So an introduction to people like you, who might take an interest in people like us, is very exciting. So I'm thrilled to be here. So um, let's, uh, now, I'm not really good at technology. What am I pressing to move on to the next time? Hurrah, I can So, um, the Cinema Museum. Um, we are about the social history of cinema and about everybody that's been involved in it. We do um, a lot of tours and what happens at the Cinema Museum is we show our artifacts and everything that we have um, related to cinema to people. But the people that come to our museum, they give to us their stories. It's impossible to be surrounded with the artifacts of cinema, everything from the seats to the ashtrays, projection equipment, all of, all of these beautiful artifacts that are quite sensory, because you can touch them, you can see them, you can smell them, you can remember them. And it's impossible to do that without people starting to tell you their memories. So what we find is, and we do particularly do a lot of work with the University of the Third Age, probably <coughs> a tour with one of their groups on a weekly basis. And they will begin to almost, in a really good way, take over the tour. Um, <laughs> they, um, Ronald, we, we, we start doing the tour and imparting in information. By the end of the tour, it's almost a light hand facilitation because these people are, are sharing their memories. It's a very um, positive and exciting experience for people. So here's our building. We have a lovely building. Um, it's the old Lambeth Workhouse. And our specific link to this building is this is the building where Charlie Chaplin and his mother were in when they found the chronic extremely hard times. And we like that link very much because, as I say, the whole point of our collection, as far as we're concerned, is what's the point of us? And I think it's very important that all museums at some stage ask themselves that question. 
what is the point of simply collecting things if you don't know what you're going to do with them? Um, Charlie Chaplin had a very difficult life. But as a result of those difficulties that he saw and went through in his life, he became a very interesting political thinker. And he did rail against the machine, and he certainly railed against poverty and injustice. And the Cinema Museum um, has a great deal um, in common with Chaplin in that regard. Here is a particularly poor quality photograph of <laughs> some beautiful things you can see at the museum which I'm suitably embarrassed about, but it's just a flavour and I'll move right on to possibly not much better um, <laughs> uh, photograph. Um, but I don't spoil you too much. I'm going to ruin your appetite for a visit to the real thing. Um, here, here are the best, and that's a <coughs> shot of our lovely people. They like nothing more than, uh, than getting dressed up. The, the Cinema Museum really is. Um, it's grown up to playground, really. It's full of lovely, interesting things. Um, it's, there's a lot of cake, there's a lot of dressing up, <laughs> and um, there's a lot of, of sharing your stories with other people. Um, so there are delightful volunteers. Now, going back to my point about what, what's the purpose of us, what makes the Cinema Museum relevant, is a really important thing. Now, the Cinema Museum have been in a difficult position over the last 10 years. Um, not all museums have to ask themselves that question. Um, a lot of museums um, get quite a lot of funding, or they're supported by a lot of um, well-off and, and generous um, people who allow them to continue their day-to-day -day work. And they never really um, are, are often find themselves in the position of actually examining and justifying their existence. The Cinema Museum, however, has been at the same building for 10 years, um, but it's had a roaming lease year on year. And we are engaged in the moment um, in a little bit of a battle about the point of us, and we have been for the last 10 years. Now, it wasn't a very nice journey to have to embark on, I have to tell you, but it's a fabulous discipline. If for 10 years you have done nothing other than examine what is the point of you, what is the use of you, then you have to, you, you can't just talk a good game. You've actually really got to dig deep and say, okay, we have all this stuff, we've got this building, what really is the point of it? You know, we're blessed with some collectors um, who, who will pull things together, but once those things are pulled together, what purpose, what useful purpose do they serve? So that's really when the Cinema Museum started, I'm not reading all this to you, you look quite, you're readers aren't you? You look quite smart, I'm not a reader of um, PowerPoints. Um, this is where we started looking at our well-being work and saying, what actually can we do? And this is where we do a lot of um, supporting um, other groups, letting them use the museum for free, um, asking them to um, come to us with local problems to see if we can use our assets and, um, and um, our collection to help. But one of the really important things um, we do is we try and develop our own projects that start to address social problems. Um, so we're very keen on all of these. We always put the cross people <coughs> We really like cross people. We like their energy. And people that are cross about something, you know, are, are very good. So um, anybody who thinks that something's unjust or unfair, we ask them to come and talk to us about it and see what we can do about it. Now, one of the things that we also feel rather cross about is the um, difficulties that people have in later life. How now we've almost seemed to have grasped the possibility that we may have worked out how we can keep people alive forever, we haven't worked out how we're going to make that bearable for them. And the Cinema Museum is very, very keen on changing the whole experience of ageing. 
Um, we have um, engaged with a lot of um, local hospitals, doctor surgeries, um, to look at the issue of <coughs> older people and the fact that the older you get, the more loss you have to tolerate as a human being. And that is very, very hard and it's very painful. And you also don't have as much future to look forward to. So one of the projects that we have pulled together um, is something um, that we do in partnership with South London Walsley Hospital Trust and <coughs> Age um, Lambeth um, from Age UK. <coughs> And this is the Gentleman's Cave Club. This is where we sit and have our cave. This is part of the Cinema Museum. It looks as if it's made by artists with love over a long period of time, and that's because it is. Because when you've only got one year security of tenure, nobody's going to give you any money. They want to know you're going to be there to repay that investment 10, 15, 30 years down, down the line. Right now, we don't have that. Um, so the Cinema Museum has evolved, and if you bring enough people who together who care and who have the ability to craft and are thoughtful with their minds and they apply their craft, then you get a great sense of love. And so this is what the Cinema Museum looks like and that's what it feels like. It doesn't always smell of cake, but it feels as if it does. It has, I was talking to somebody earlier about this um, Danish word, is it? Hoogie? What did we decide it was? Hoogie? <laughs> anyway, it means cozy. And um, that's really um, how we like people to feel when it comes to the Cinema Museum. The Gentleman's Cake Club, oh, these points on the left hand side, this is what these guys come to us with. They're referrals from mental health hospitals. They're elderly men, they have suffered illness. In the main, it's cancer. They're in recovery, but they're at risk of reoccurrence, and they've got complex physical and mental health complications. So these are really fragile people, hugely at risk um, of so social isolation. And what the Gentleman's Cake Club is, and the cake here serves a very important technical purpose, lovely as it is. But the whole point of the cake club is that um, we want to start giving people some respect back into their lives. These are people who have had a lot of their freedom of choice taken away from them. Um, there's a great sense of loss. Um, it's, it, it, it's not always a very pleasant experience being treated in hospital. And when people come to the Gentleman's Cake Club, they're normally really feeling quite vulnerable. Um, one of the things we do at the Cake Club, it's, it's really simple, none of this is at all complicated. Um, we have a tasting, and we have three of the same cakes, and we all decide, and we eat lots of all of it, and we all vote, and we decide which is the best. That's it. <laughs> and then the guys decide between them what flavour they would like me to purchase for us to try next week. <laughs> but all of this is about decision making, it's about treating people as grown ups, it's about having equal conversations. Nobody comes to, to the cinema museum to have anything done to them. They're not, they're not given therapy, they're not anything. They're treated um, with respect as human beings. Um, the other important thing um, about the Cinema Museum and the work that we do there with this particular group of people is that it brings back to them a sense of social normality. Um, they do need to be re-socialized and they do need to get their confidence back most of them don't want to do it in a medical or an institutional environment. They want to do it in an interesting, respectful environment where they can share their memories. Sharing memories is really important. Um, it starts to create bonds between the people that come to the group. But also, these people are um, they are quite mature. They've been around the block a bit. They don't like being patronised. They don't like their conversations being too manicured or sorted out for them. Hello, now we're all going to talk about so and so. Well, no, that doesn't really work very well with our user group. Um, but the great thing is that although they come from different backgrounds, different intellectual backgrounds, different um, cultures, different financial backgrounds, everybody knows about film. 
and they can start and they start talking about film. They don't have to talk about film all the time. But I think the point that what, what we do at the cinema museum is we create that environment. It is cozy, it is respectful, it's got loads of stuff in it, and it works very well as an environment to um, create conversations. Um, the I put our partners up here not at the end as a flash up, thanks to our sponsors. They think it's any money, by the way, so they're not really sponsors. But <laughs> <laughs> that's also important to say that too. Um, but these people are great because what we, we are about museums. We are not about going and directly connecting with, with the user group. So South London Morsley Hospital are brilliant. They bring those people to us. Um, Lambeth Age UK, we have huge resource problems, we can't do all the data protection, they contact the guys, they speak to them, they make sure they come along, so we have other people carrying the burden for us, and they're great, and we're very grateful. There are two of our chaps, and me, having a nice time. Um, this is also, we try and get them to push boundaries in terms of them deciding what they want to do. They decided... They, they told me that they had found out that there was a place around the corner they thought did slightly better cake than I might provide them with. <laughs> and they wanted to take me there, which I was thrilled about <coughs> because this is the first time they wanted to go outside the museum. So there we are in the Buddhist cafe around the corner. And I'm horrified to say that actually the Buddhists make much better cake. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly for Mr. Waitrose and Mr. Sainsbury anyway. So why iPads? Um, cakes and iPads, well basically it's cakes and memories really, but in the absence of the iPad I would be in trouble because we are dealing with a group of gentlemen for whom um, memory is not an easy thing anymore. They find it difficult to make new memories and they're not always finding it easy to connect with their old memories. And this is one of the reasons why they're becoming so socially isolated, because they don't have the confidence to start a conversation, because they're not entirely sure whether they're going to be able to finish it or not. Because they forget the ends of jokes, they forget the name of the person, and the whole thing, the whole thing of having a conversation just becomes very <coughs> frustrating and irritating for them. Now, what I do with the iPad, if you can imagine for a moment me being silent, and it does happen, I can assure you, um, I, I... They talk, I get them the cake and the teas and everything, and they start talking, and as they're talking, I Google images of everything they're talking about. And the minute they go, is that, I go, is it that? And they go, no. And I Google again, and I hold it up, and the conversation rolls on. So this, this use of images to prompt and support this conversation allows a gentleman to be so much more ambitious in the things that they talk about. It also reveals a lot of things that they will show you pictures of old houses they lived in, towns they lived in, buildings that aren't there anymore. And sometimes then we trail on to conversations about, well, who was in this film and who was in that. And the combination of all of these things together makes it very easy for these gentlemen to unite together in conversation, gain back a lot of their confidence as, as human beings. And for us, it's, I mean, I put oil the wheels. I've never known anything that couldn't be improved by cake. Um, so <laughs> the, 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 the cake side of it is massively important. Um, but I really must, you know, do a big shout out for, for iPads and the, uh, the visual ability the, the, or people's ability to revisit memories once they've got um, these visual prompts. It's really, really helpful for us. Um, it becomes less important as the months go by because these gentlemen are building up their confidence in their relationships with others. So they're less worried if they can't remember anything. But the combination of the two things has been very powerful and useful for us. And memories really, you know, down to this, this, this point, it's what we rely on to help us communicate with other people. And, you know, the world needs as much communication as it can get. And it's very important <coughs> um, for the gentlemen that we work with to feel 
that they can still converse with other people in the real world. Um, thank you for listening to me. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, we are not just here for the afternoon. We are 100% committed to this concept of film and memory. And um, we'd like to welcome you. Thank you.